All right, guys, the crank showed up just like I told you it would. So happy. Uh, let's check this thing out. So, crank works is who I use in case you haven't been paying attention, in case you're new to the channel uh, for rebuilding cranks. They're down in Arizona. They do the best job of anyone I've ever had do anything on a crank. Um, I just love everything about it. They, you can tell. The, uh, you know, you know who did it, whatever. It's really sweet. Um, we used a Wasner rod, uh, which is super, super high end. And yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. So the first thing we got to do before we drop this thing down into the case is we got to put the, um, the outer race on here. So I'll show you how we do that. I in the other video I have um, of uh, you know taking it off with the special tool, I'll show you how to put it back on with the special tool. All right, guys, here's the tool. Got a race. Goes up in here. There we go, guys. Now we're gonna heat this up with this, get it real hot, and then we're gonna come over here. And we're gonna slide it onto that part of the crank. Uh, it's the left side, the ignition side. And then you could not buy the part. Like you couldn't buy a head. You couldn't buy anything. I don't know. I'll call it a jig or or whatever. But the uh, the big plate, the press plate they have for those the, the KTM was, you know, and they vary from model to model to model, you know. And, Right. See how that dropped right on? We're all good to go. Now we're gonna take this crank and put it over here in this case. Uh, but what I'm gonna do first is that crank is actually pretty cold from just uh, transit. So I'm gonna use that uh, torch, heat this up just a little bit, to see if we can just slide that thing in there. <laughs> And then it, it got to the point where we were having to take, and um, I don't know if they changed suppliers or what, but we were having to take and run it. We had a whole, you know, they were like three dollars and fifty cents a piece. Oh yeah. You know, for a butt connector, something in the, down in the bowels of the ship. You know, you'd have to have something that was certified. All right, guys. So now we're gonna take this case half, put it on. But what you got to do first, if you're doing this and making your life easier, is put the starter in first. Right on, guys. There we go. So we got the starter bolts. I haven't tightened these bolts down so it can still wiggle a little bit, which is good. Uh, now we're going to set this case down on. And if we do this right, it should just kind of whoop down on there. We shouldn't have to press it or anything. All right, guys. I like to take some grease, put it on all these seals that things are going to go through so that as we slide it down on there, we don't hang up. Go nice and easy. And while you're doing it, you want to make sure you can rotate everything. You don't have anything get weird and hung up. And then we'll just tap, tap, tap. And before you go too tight with it, you want to make sure you get the gasket all lined up um, because gaskets don't ever fit just perfectly. They kind of want to wander around, so you want to make sure you can move it and get things where you need them. guys so after you get that all done you definitely want to make sure the crank is still turning nice and smooth um, don't want any binding it's perfect really stoked about getting this crank rebuilt because generally crankworks does a better job than what OEM is so um, and it's usually a little bit less money so now we're gonna go around I'm just gonna cut the extra little bits of the gasket off of places all right, guys, gonna put the main seal in on this side. I'm gonna clean this up, put a little bit of red Loctite around there, like I said, for another, it's an anaerobic sealer to make sure this thing is nice and tight and we don't get any oil going into the motor. My, my 
savings is dwindling. <laughs> yeah, that's not good. I'm doing it instead of us hiring somebody to do it. Right. Yeah. All right, guys. Next is we take this bushing, and there's really no up or down on it. It's symmetrical in every way. So we're just gonna put it in here, and just kind of be real careful with the seal so that it looks all the same all the way around. Now we have our uh, main gear, I guess I would call it. And I think what we're gonna do is, let me see, I think it goes like that, actually. Yeah, so it's gonna go like that, but we've gotta get the key, Woodruff key in there. It's always a bit of a fight. We're gonna get some pliers and kind of squeeze down on that and get that to go in. And eh, it wouldn't be good, but it'd throw the counterbalancer all out of whack. Here fits on just perfect. Then we got lock washer comes on here, and then I'm gonna clean this up, put a little red Loctite on that too. All right, so this is left hand thread, guys. Impact, hold the rod. Between that Loctite and that lock washer, that thing's not coming off. Alright, so next, counterbalancer. So it's going to come in from this side over here. Through here, we're going to be careful not to damage this seal as we go through. It's going to seal on this surface. Uh, and then we have a Woodruff key for it, but it goes on from the other side. So we're going to take this, go nice and slow. Here it comes. There we go. All right. So now, got a little Woodruff key. Rotate it till we can see it there. Now, guys, this is important that we get this timed up with the crank. And if we look here, see there's a dot right there. That dot is on a gap. And then there's a dot right here. There you go. Dot right there. That's gonna go in that gap. So we get started. We're gonna come down. Make sure. We're all lined up just right. That looks good. And the reason that's so important is that's a counterbalancer and you want the weight down when the crank is up and vice versa. If you mess that up and mistime it, it'll shake this motor apart because uh, it'll be doing the opposite of counterbalancing. It's worse than if you just didn't have it in there. Another bolt, we're gonna clean that, Loctite it. There we go. Now that that's all on there, I like to work on this side, get the flywheel and everything covered on this side, then we'll flip it over and do the clutch. Everything's looking good in here. Just have to grab our, get our flywheel and the pickup coil. All right, guys, got our pickup coil. Put that down in here. I like putting Loctite on everything that's inside of a case cover because if it were to come out, it's a giant bummer to have things flying around spinning things. So, All right, guys, so next, take our starter Bendix, slide it down in there. Now, I'm going to grease this all up really good because this is how this works. There's no oil in this thing. Um, now, I've thought about putting oil in it. I know people have, um, but there's a vent 
underneath there and I don't know how to clog that up and I don't want to mess it up if I shouldn't. So anyway, I'm just going to grease everything really good. Um, I'm going to use some spray grease on the Bendix um, so that it uh, soaks down in. And I'm going to take some just motor axe and grease all these gears. Uh, then we'll take the flywheel and put it on. Uh, we got our winter key back in here. Now we got our flywheel. Line that up. Got our lock washer nut. Again, a little bit of red Loctite. Alright guys, cover pretty straightforward. Just go easy, get her on there, line it up, make sure that the starter Bendix ends up in its home. But again, I showed you guys before, I put new bushings in there, so we're all good. Drop all these in, same thing, seven foot pounds, and we'll be good. Flash or anything, or you just run the stock ECU? That's the, well, that's the SXS. SX, came okay. with the conditions where it's like, okay, I need to take some hit out of this. Man. I don't need to... All right, guys, so now we're going to flip the motor over, and one of the first things you do is going to take this eh, shift shaft that has oil in it <laughs> and put it in there. All right, guys, we're going to drop this and go nice and easy because it's got to go through. A seal, and as you're going, you're gonna to have to push this back. Later, Mike. All right, so we got that down in there. Uh, now we can start working on putting all the rest of everything back in. We're gonna go Kickstarter next. All right, guys, so we're putting this together. Uh, the Kickstarter is just gonna go in like this, but you gotta line it up right, and it's interesting, it's kind of hard to see. So there's a dot. Let's see, focus. There we go. There's a dot right there. That dot has to line up with the spline that has a, a line. Let's see if we can, I don't know. Focus, you mother. <laughs> there we go. See that line right there? It's gotta line up with that. What that does is it gives the right amount of preload on the Kickstarter so that it will come back. All right, guys, next is the clutch. Um, I have got a whole bunch of new parts to put in this clutch. So we're just going to start with the uh, this bearing. Goes first, then the basket. And you got to kind of always rock these baskets around so they seat down. Then we got that spacer, goes there. Install the hub, but we're gonna put new uh, bushings in here. Those dampers are not in here. That's on purpose. All right, we got brand new dampers to go in here. Uh, and that is because when I pulled the old ones out, they were all just falling apart. Also, you should really replace these things relatively often. I forget what the actual interval is, but um, they kind of wear out pretty quick. And this is the cush drive for your transmission. So it's not so hard on the training as it engages and starts driving the rear wheel. There we go. And it takes some pushing because they're really tight when they're brand new like this, which is what you want. Now we're gonna take it and line it up with the splines. Perfect. Now I got a brand new clutch to put in here too. All right, so to start, you gotta take these little pins, drop them down into their homes, and they'll kinda stay if they got a little oil on them, but you just gotta be a little bit careful because they do kinda wanna try to fall out. There we go. Now this clutch, uh, is out of a brand new bike that we put a recluse in and the customer didn't want the old clutch so this thing's got maybe 30 minutes on it so uh it's 
like I said, basically brand new. We're just gonna drop it in, alternating. And there we go. Got the clutch stack, now I got a brand new lock washer. Gonna drop that down into place. Gonna take our nut, I'm gonna clean this actually really fast uh, and get it nice and clean. And I'm gonna put a little bit of red Loctite on there, even though this lock nut, I just like to have everything super secure. Now I'm gonna bend that tab up. Do that, that'll keep that from moving. Now we take our throw out, bearing thing deal. And we're gonna take our pressure plate. Get that on there. We got our protector ring, drop this down here. Now I'm gonna start with the number two position for that. Uh, but you got to understand this is not about clutch tension. This is about getting when you tighten this down having this Belleville washer be flat. That is what they want. They don't it's not about uh, lightening or tightening the clutch. It's about having the right amount of tension on the spring. So start in number two because that's where they come and since this is a brand new clutch it should be about right. All right, so those aren't torqued yet, but what we're looking for is for this surface to be flat. And just looking at it, it is. I'll grab a machinist ruler, make sure, but it looks really good. So I'm gonna go ahead and tighten those down. I'll grab the ruler, but I'm 99% sure that's good. So if it were up a little bit, you'd change that ring to drop it down, or for concave a little bit, you'd change it to bring it back up. All right, guys, got everything tightened down. We're ready to go, ready to put the cover on. Uh, grab the new gasket. All right, guys, so as we put this gasket on, uh, you really don't have to mess with it, but this is pretty cool. It's a nice thing about KTMs, is this is the power valve actuator, uh, and it sits down like that um, under normal circumstances. And then as the motor spins, it raises up because this is uh, hooked to the water pump, and this comes, it, it spins and moves this up because uh, there's balls down in here on ramps and they spin out and raise this up. So the cool thing is you don't have to like jockey anything into the position, you just set it down on there. Uh, now we're gonna be really careful because I put a new uh, seal that goes around here. So as we go on, we'll go nice and easy, make sure that seal doesn't get messed up. Uh, and then, um, yeah, then we'll bolt that up and be working on the top end. All right guys, almost forgot. Uh, I got this little carrier, which is the thing that always leaks on KTMs. Uh, I got new um, I call them, call them D-rings because they don't look like O-rings, but uh, new O-rings for that. We're going to put that on. And you got to slide this over this first. There we go. All right, guys. A lot of times when you're installing this, because it has to line up with the water pump, you have to kind of rotate the crank a little bit to get the gears to move to get it to line up. So that's all good. Um, that looks good. That's all brand new and happy. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bolt the cover down. I'm actually gonna take this carbon up cover off. I got a new part to put on there too. All right guys, so I'm putting the normal cover back on because I'm super excited to try out uh, one of these extreme part, um, uh, extreme, excuse me, extreme parts clutch covers, classic style. Uh, the Carbon Up cover has been awesome. Thank you, Carbon Up. I'm not throwing it away. I'm keeping it. Um, actually, I might talk to someone here who is interested in trying it out. It's got a My Era, um, you know, 250 or 300. If you want to give me a ring, let me know. Uh, email Morgan at Highland-Cycles.com. Uh, we can talk about you guys trying that thing out. Um, it is really, really good. But I just want to try out the carbon or the uh, extreme parts version too. I got this on, got the extreme uh, parts uh, clutch cover on. This hole, I had to drill this out because where that bolt rode, it was holding this cover up. So I'm going to tell the extreme parts guys that. I'll make sure this is the right part number. Um, they just sent it to me for free because of my orders for other stuff. But 
Uh, so anyway, I had to drill that out, which is no big deal because it's still protected from a hit or anything like that. So now, we guys, you gotta take the power valve spring. You see that groove right there? That goes onto that post. So you gotta make sure it drops onto where it's supposed to go. Now that's on there, I got the red spring in there for now. Gonna take our craft easy adjust and we put the bolts in there. Uh, and then we'll be ready to work on the top end. All right, guys, we got the motor. Bottom end is all together. Time to put the top end together. I'm doing Kelsey's um, piston from RK Tech. So he sent me two base gaskets. So those are stacked. Those are specific. That's raising the port. Um, so it's raising the cylinder up. So then he also sent me to go with it a new um, even higher compression dome uh, to make up for the fact that the cylinder is going to raise up. So. The top end of this is like every other top end I've shown you guys. I'm not going to film it now, um, but uh, I'll check in if there's anything really interesting going on. But generally, it's just like a top end on any other 300. Um, like I said, I've filmed that a bunch of times. So I'm going to get it. I'll, let me show you guys uh, Kelsey's piston real fast. I'll show you that. So here is his piston. Um, he coats the inside of it and the top has to help with heat. Uh, another thing that's different is the pins for the rings are in a little bit different spot, keeping the ring end gaps further away from each other. Uh, that helps with cooling and helps with sealing to make more compression. Also, the top of the piston from the, the distance from the top ring to the top of the piston is a little bit different. Uh, and there's a lot of other differences that he didn't tell me, um, probably because he's keeping them proprietary. I don't blame him. Um, but yeah, so I'm really excited to get this thing together. So. Let me get this thing back together. We'll check in because uh, then the next video is going to be me putting in the frame and starting it up. All right, guys, got the motor all back together. Got the two base gas that uh, Kelsey recommends. Got his piston. Got his new uh, dome inside the RK Tech head. Uh, brand new clutches you saw, all that good stuff. Motor is in, ready to go back into the frame, and I cannot wait. So. That's the end of this video, guys. I'm going to, uh, the next video will be me putting into the frame, getting the extreme parts fan set up with the cut in the hose and all that stuff, and then starting it, making sure the fan runs and all that good stuff. So <clears throat> also when we do that video, we'll be talking about the carburetor and the jetting we're running on all that. So anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I hope you liked that video. Uh, make sure you subscribe. There's lots and lots more content coming from this motor and that bike.